Go ahead. So, good afternoon, Madam Chair and the distinguished members of the committee. My name is Anthony Nguyen. I'm Chief Operating Officer for We Stay Nos Quedamos, a community development corporation that serves the Melrose, Com yep. sec Melrose Commons section of the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Our organization was founded as a coalition of residents, business owners, and community-based organizations committed to a revitalization agenda that was led by the voices of those who remained in the community uh, during the dark days of the past. And today we are here to add our voices to the community of support in advancing cooperatives as a vital economic, excuse me, as a vital opportunity for economic growth for our constituency. Supporting the health of these potential job-creating vehicles will translate into real change for new business growth in our community and others. What has been clear in efforts to date, there is a need for the city to make sure opportunities more viable, to make this opportunity more viable through providing funding to support for the development of leaders, such as the Green Workers Cooperative. This is an example of an opportunity that many community residents find appealing, but are shut out due to the lack of support in setting up and sustaining their respective endeavors. Making cooperatives a viable, if not preferred, contracting option for city agencies, this will have a major impact on economic viability for cooperatives through stronger customer base building. The importance of capital support for cooperatives cannot be understated. All businesses need the working capital to strive, and any effort by this body to make such funding available is a necessary undertaking to ensure the growth of this entity and these entities. The future, is shifting, the future of shifting the imbalance against economic inequality is also, will also be affected when cooperatives are given the support they deserve. When neighbors find supportive conditions to come together to solve their own economic challenges, the community and the city benefits as a whole. We praise the chair for the commitment to this issue, and we look forward to working with this body and others to advance this worthy endeavor for our community. Nos Quedamos, to point out as well, has been working with the uh, Green Workers Cooperative to begin to try to develop our incubator for these type of works. We're looking at our garden communities for food co-ops. We're looking at different ways that we can establish farmers markets through the capacity that has existed through Nos Quedamos' work in the past. And the work that the Green Workers Co-op has been bringing to our community has been a vital new conversation for us to show economic opportunity for our residents. So I thank you for the opportunity to testify, and we look forward to working with you on this. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Melissa Risser, and I'm a public interest attorney working with CUNY School of Law's Community and Economic Development Clinic. As you just heard from Carmen about what we do, I'm going to skip that part of my testimony, although it's in the written part. Uh, I just want to speak more about what underlies the motivation for the CEDC to, to work with worker cooperatives. Mm -hmm. um, Carmen spoke of our partnership with Mondragon USA, um, and our partnership really views worker cooperative development as a means to overcome inequality of opportunity, mobility, and income. The partnership aims to create a rising and expanding middle class through developing worker equity and equal share ownership. In so doing, the partnership intends to create competitive jobs with higher wages and better economic benefits, which support families and communities and local economies. Uh, as she mentioned, although I couldn't hear her testimony, the first worker cooperative to come of our partnership is the commercial laundry facility in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh. And that cooperative will employ over 100 low-income people, primarily people of color, who were laid off when another commercial laundry closed down. These workers will receive living wages, build equity through ownership, and help revive a distressed community where the laundry and many of its employees are located and live. On a local, national, and global scale, the CEDC views worker cooperatives as a pathway out of poverty, where jobs and profits remain local and wealth building occurs for both individuals and communities. Worker cooperatives create meaningful, long-term, safe, and stable jobs with increased job security and reduced workplace abuse. They produce an array of economic benefits to lower income, socially and economically marginalized communities. In worker cooperatives, profit sharing limits inc income disparities within the business and provides skill and asset building opportunities for workers of all income levels. Employees in typ typically low wage work can earn more, as we've heard today, in a worker cooperative than in a traditional company because of equitable pay structures between worker owners. Furthermore, worker owners have more control over their work, which we've also heard firsthand today, democratically managing the business, and thus are more engaged than in traditional workplaces. 
As institutions where real democracy is practiced on a daily basis, the CEDC believes worker cooperatives serve as a model for building a meaningful movement for workplace democracy and transformative economic justice and social change. The economic opportunities worker cooperatives offer are essential today given the increasing levels of poverty, outsourced jobs, unemployment, and wealth inequality in the U.S. and New York. Uh, my written testimony talks about some statistics surrounding that, which I'll skip right now. But, uh, you know, more than one in five New Yorkers live in poverty, many even though they're employed. Uh, minimum and low-wage jobs have been the majority of jobs created since 2008, and these jobs simply do not compensate workers enough to lift them out of poverty. It's critical that the city support the creation of jobs that combat poverty and empower workers to build businesses rooted in local communities. And we believe worker cooperatives are natural vehicles for helping employ low-income communities, improve community infrastructure, and increase basic access to services. So we urge you to um, listen to the recommendations that others have mentioned today, and thank you for the opportunity to speak on this today. My name is Morgan Crawford. I'm Director of Educational Programs for the North American Students of Cooperation, which is a federation of stu student and youth housing cooperatives and cooperative businesses throughout the United States and Canada. Mm. Um, I'd like to thank you all very deeply for taking the time to hear this issue today. It's very important to me. Now, in my role as Director of Educational Programs for the North American Students of Cooperation, I work very closely with thousands of youth and student members of our housing cooperatives and cooperative businesses throughout the U.S. and Canada, and my work privileges me by allowing me to observe on a daily basis the myriad benefits that the cooperative model affords the youth that I serve. Cooperatives in all forms empower their members through true democratic control and afford their members a powerful amount of agency which many of them do not experience in any other areas of their lives. Additionally, working for an organization with a 45-year track record, I've had the opportunity to observe the impacts and improvements that long-term support of cooperatives can bring to communities. The worker cooperative model is one that I believe in very deeply, as it can truly revolutionize and improve the lives of those who practice it, as you've heard today. Through democratic operations, member financial control, and equitable wealth distribution, worker cooperatives are capable of providing the support to individuals, families, and communities that is needed in our city and in this economy. As many other regions, states, and countries have done before us, now is the time for New York City to embrace the worker cooperative as a powerful tool to ameliorate poverty. In solidarity with New York City-based worker cooperatives, I ask that the city recognize worker cooperatives as valuable tools in job creation, promoting living wages, reducing income equality, income inequality and encouraging workplace democracy and that the city continue to explore the many ways that it can support the developments and operations of new and existing worker cooperatives within New York City. I want to thank you again for your time and your, your listening today on this important issue. Have a great day. My name is Peter Rannis. I'm a <coughs> professor emeritus from the Graduate Center, and I want to thank the committee for holding these hearings, uh, Carmen del, uh, Maria de Carmen del Arroyo and, uh, and uh, Councilwoman Palma. I think it's a terrific idea that you are holding these meetings. I can just suggest to you that the council in Buenos Aires, I'm familiar with the co-ops in Buenos Aires, I've worked on cooperative movements in Argentina for about 10 years, and I can assure you that the Council of Buenos Aires is, has did the same thing that you're doing way back after their crisis in 2003. Uh, the crisis was 2001, but they began uh, developing cooperatives in 2003. It's very similar. We had our crisis in 08, and now <laughs> several years later, you're getting on board with creating cooperatives. I think it's a marvelous idea. Now, many of the speakers and many of the women in Cipuede and, and the other groups have really shown what it is, how it changes life uh, for the members of the cooperatives. In Argentina, you have many women in textile areas who have now taken over cooperatives and run them very well. Uh, when there is a need for expertise, 
they hire someone on contract for three or four days, economist, lawyer, an accountant, and then chow. And they go on with their own cooperative life. Uh, what I want to say is that the cooperatives, as someone else has said, I guess uh, Chris mentioned that, that cooperatives' longevity far superior to private enterprise. In Argentina, in 08, there was a survey done, 93% uh, of cooperatives, and there are over 300 or 100 of them have survived. This is a big deal. You can't make that comment in small businesses. They go up and down and fail very easily. I would like to say that the cooperatives I visited and spoke to their leadership and members are in every single area of society. We, we've talked here mostly about services, which are very important. New York is a service economy. However, there, there are industries in New York that are failing every day and that could easily be taken over by the city council by using, and this is not controversial in my eyes, eminent domain. I know it's a dirty word because it's never used on behalf of factory workers or service workers. It should be because uh, eminent domain has been used for airports, for schools, for housing, for complexes, for sports. Why can it not be used to take over factories to provide employment and avoid poverty for the working class? I have a lot more to say, but my time has run out. Thanks a lot for having this hearing. Well, you'll have an opportunity to say more as we move this conversation forward. Thank you. My name is Scott Trumbull. I work for The Working World, which is a revolving loan, loan fund for workers' cooperatives in Argentina, Nicaragua, and the United States. Um, first, I just wanted to thank you all for, for organizing this hear hearing and giving us the opportunity to, to testify. Um, it's, a, it's a really big deal. Um, so I've worked with, with co-ops for a little over three years now, um, and in that short time, uh, I've seen really the transformative power of cooperatives, the way they can really change uh, lower income neighborhoods. Um, before I moved to New York, I worked with co-ops uh, for two and a half years in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is obviously a totally different place than New York City. Um, but I wanted to touch on it because the government there, and especially local government, uh, was very intentional about supporting workers' cooperatives. Um, our, you know, local government bought products from our from our network of co-ops. They supported with um, industry-specific te technical assistance, um, and, and in some cases, they even provided seed capital to start new cooperatives. Um, and just sort of that that support system was really a game changer for a lot of the co-ops we worked with. Um, and there were, you know, I, I worked with co-ops that went from being four or five people to 25 people over the course of two years. And it's because of that support system that was in place for them. Um, and, you know, I think another important point is that these were not, this was not like a policy sea change, right? This was not, this was not about totally remaking uh, sort of small business support. Um, it was about tweaking policies that were already in place uh, to target this model. Um, and so I think we can do the same thing here. I think we can do the same thing in New York um, because the, I'm now I'm working uh, here with six cooperatives, two of which uh, are out in the Rockaways. Karen mentioned the construction co-op, also a bakery out there. Um, and you know, the challenges that I see with these businesses, even though it's a totally different economic and, and cultural context, the challenges I see are the same. Capital access, access to technical assistance, and, uh, and you know, I think if the, if the, po if the city can take steps to, to provide those things to co-ops, it can just totally, ch it can totally change the game uh, for these businesses. Um, so thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and I think we're all looking forward to build th building this with you. So thanks. Mm. Questions? No? Okay. Thank you for your testimony um, and for waiting as long as you have to be able to provide um, your comments to us. And we look forward to the ongoing conversation. This is the beginning of um, some work that we have to get done um, over the course. Um, and we have a plan, the short term, long term, um, the idea is to um, harvest um, more worker cooperatives in, in our city.
Thank you all. And our panel, but not the least, and again, if there's anyone here, after I call these last five names that wants to say something and I haven't called, it's because I don't have a little slip like this, so see the sergeant and make sure that um, he or she gets it. Sean Basinski, Street Vendor Project, uh, Christopher Velasco, Granja Edge Slope Farm, something, Eagle Slope, sorry, okay. Shane Smith, Democracy at Work. Eagle Slope, oh, I remember you, okay. Wanda Salaman, and Kelly Perry. Anybody else who's here to testify whose name I have not called? That's it. Oh, yeah, we called you earlier. You weren't here. Um, can we get her, her slip? Come up. She did. Yeah, she did. I called her earlier. She wasn't, she didn't respond. But it's okay. You're here now. All right. Um,